Hey, this is Renata Ray from DreamSpire TV. We are glad that you are here to join us again for another look at those who are in the business, in the industry, music, film. You never know what we're going to bring to you on DreamSpire TV. You just know it's going to be good and it's going to be like super hot. So we have an artist. Um, his name is Luqua. He is Italian born, multilingual, multi-talented. And let me tell you, I did get a chance to peep some of his music and it had me reminiscent of that old school R&B. So without any further delay, we're going to bring uh, him on. I'm doing fine. How are you? I am great. Now, people that know me know I'm notorious about names. So let me make sure I got your right. Will you say it for our audience? <laughs> Luca. <laughs> okay. See, I, I, I was good. My name actually <laughs> is of Italian descent. So maybe that's why I, I got it. <laughs> well, you know what it is? It's, it's the QE. You know, my, my, my actual name is L-U-K-A. And, you know, the original Italian version is with a C. So a um, little background story about the name with a K is that my dad didn't like his dad's name because it is a tradition, you know, to get your grandfather's name. So not only did he want to change it or not use his dad's name, he, he changed a letter in the name just to piss him off even more, I guess. And so, um, so it is L-U-K-A, but we changed it. You know, we figured, well, you know, to be an artist out there and everybody has these crazy names. So I figured, why don't we change the K to a Q? And we just still pronounce it the same, Luca, but we just have the Q in there. That's it. <laughs> okay. Well, it has a nice ring to it, like your music does. So let's let's get into it. Um, so how long have you been doing music and kind of what inspired you to get into this uh kind of almost like a retro R&B vibe that you have going on, or how would you describe your music and, and how did you get into it? Yeah, you're not too far off. Um, I, I, I would say I started about 30 years ago. And the thing is when you, when you start off a long, you know, when you're young and you've been doing it for a long time, but you never really get that mainstream exposure, you know, people come to you and they go, oh, you sound like Bruno Mars or you sound like, you know, this guy and that guy. And I'm like, well, they kind of sound like me because I've been doing it longer. <laughs> so they don't, you know, but people don't know that. Um, but I've been I've been doing this for a very long time. And I've been uh, I've been really just trying to make good songs. You know, when you go into the studio and you try to make a song, you really want to just do something that feels good. You never do something because, uh, you know, oh, I got to make a hit song. And I, I think, you know, these people are like that and other people are like this. And in a way, even you, you can't even do that anyway. You, there is no formula. You, that's why you just go in and whatever feels good, and you just hope that people vibe from the same vibe you have as you're making the song. And, and definitely, you have your how how do they say it now? You're a whole vibe. I, I was yeah. <laughs> I was really I was liking it for sure. And you touched on something we I touch on and talking to a lot of people from. Mm -hmm. um, NAACP awards, the Stellar Award uh, winners, one thing is in common, that there is no overnight success here. People want to paint it like it is, but it's it's a journey uh, to get out there. And so sometimes that overnight success is 20, or in your case, 30 years in the making. Now, I can't hardly believe that. You must have started when you were about five or something. Okay, mm -hmm. you must be at <laughs> All those years yeah. in there, 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. so what is something most people don't even know about you? So it could be something random. It could be something deep. Um, I don't know. I think I just, I I mean, if, if we keep it with the industry, the music industry, I think it's, you know, not too many people say it, but the music industry is a mess. Um, and, you know, People always try to go with a trend and, and go with the flow. I think I think people that you see really have massive success is because they do their own thing. They never really stay in everyone else's lane. They stay in their own lane. And uh, I think if if you really want music that 
has some realness to it that is not necessarily just Hollywood. I'll put it that way. Then my music is the way to listen is, is the way to go and the music to listen to really. Um, I just hope that people feel it. I mean, we've had some good responses on some of my songs where you know we put it out there and have these groups listen to it and and they really go, wow, this is new, this is fresh. Uh, you know, there is almost like no no pretense to the whole thing. That's great. So what would be the biggest difference that you find between performing over in Europe and in the States? What's what's the biggest difference that you found in the audience and the scene there? Um, Europe is, well, you know, Europe is a totally different bag, but Europe, European people are way more open to things. There is no, there is no judgment right as you step on the scene. They it's almost like they step back and check you out, you know, and they, you don't get any harsh judgment, you know, here is like, Oh, you know, we like it, but you know, you get that following, but that comes and you don't have that in Europe In Europe. They just go, well, you know, this is cool. And that's cool. And, and then everything else that doesn't fit really like no one really mentions it because no one cares. Cause once, once you like something, you really do. And, and it's, it's almost like a, you know, being in a relationship, no one's is, no one is perfect, but you know, you go with, you go with the good parts and then, you know, the other parts you can work on or you can just ignore them. That's up to you, of course. But um, it's kind of really like that. Europeans are more like, that's cool. I don't care about the rest. That's it. Great. Um, I have one of our interns for our uh, station is actually an artist out of mm -hmm. Italy. So it's, okay. it's very interesting to hear her perspective too yeah. uh, of, about the differences, but she hasn't been stateside. And so you're in LA. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a native of Long Beach. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So how long have you been in LA and, and how are you liking it? I, I know um, you guys were rocking and rolling Sunday, but how do you like it overall? I know it's well, LA is, I've been here for, I'd say roughly 26 years now. And I've visited other places in the US. And I think LA is, it, it, it was better. Uh, LA has become, I think anybody really will tell you this, that lives here, LA has become something that not everybody wants. And, uh, you know, other, other states have a little bit more movement and a little bit more, a little bit more of an upbeat type feel here. You, in the end here, you, here's what you get now is basically the sun. Uh, everything else is, you know, harder rule, harder and more difficult rules and regulations as far as anything you want to do in life in, in California. Okay. I thought you had just recently moved. So you've been there a long time. Time. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're definitely, you've seen the good, the bad, the ugly, and all of that. Oh, yeah. but I can tell you one thing: I will always miss the beach. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The sun. I mean, you can't beat it. Like right now, we have. I think it's today's 100 degrees. Oh wow! You're trying to rival Texas. I'm in Dallas now, and I just moved from Atlanta. Oh. And okay. this is something else here. Okay. So you've been in the industry for a while and, and you've been plugging yes. away and I'm sure yes. you ran into a lot of people that give, giving you a lot of advice, but if you mm -hmm. could just pick out something that really stood out, what is like the best piece of advice that's kind of kept you going and, and that you really value? Um, well, if you've been doing it or trying to be doing it for as long as I have, uh, of course, you get depressed and you get down quite a bit. But what people usually say is they, they, you know, I think the best thing that someone had told me one time is like, just don't give up. And I know it's a general, it's a general thing to say. But when someone that is close to you says that and says, don't give up, you have good things going on, uh, you know, we'll get to the right people and we'll get it out and we'll make it happen. Um, I think just don't give up unless something really interferes with your path. You know, after so many years, and there's, and you just have to change the course of things. Um, but I think the thing was really don't give up, just keep on going, even though, you know, it does get hard sometimes. And we all, I think we all want to do certain things in life, and sometimes we don't get to do them. Um, I guess I'm fortunate enough to continue to try to do what I really want to do. Um, so I would say just don't give up. I think that was really the, the biggest thing. Don't give up and stick with it and be yourself. You don't have to, 
I, I don't know. You know, some people associate with being yourself, you know, dyeing your hair pink. I'm not talking about that. I mean, being yourself as, a, you know, your character, and what type of person you are. And you don't have to change for anybody. And, and, just, and just be you. That's it. And and I found really that's genuinely the only person you can be. Yeah. Um, <laughs> of, of for sure. So what was it? So you've been here and you've been plugging away and mm -hmm. you've had some level of success and you're still making awesome music. What would you tell someone that's just coming up in the industry? Um what would be something that you would tell them or you would want to share with them? Um, I would say keep working on yourself. Uh, if it's singing they want to do, keep practicing, um, keep staying on it. Don't rely too much on all the auto-tune because one day the auto-tune will be gone and then you'll be standing there by yourself and you're going to have to rely on your skill. <laughs> um, so I would say, Keep, keep doing it. Keep practicing. Don't be discouraged. A lot of people will tell you, no, it's not good. It's good. And, uh, you know, we're so many people nowadays. It's just because one person says he, they don't like it. You shouldn't be discouraged. Just just keep on keeping on. That's all I got to say. Now, what was like the first song that you remember singing? Oh, boy. <laughs> like, that was. And how oh, old boy. were you? <laughs> I don't know. I think it was a blues song. It was the most ridiculous thing I think I've ever heard myself. <laughs> um, I, I sang this blues song and I, I recorded it. And you don't really know what your voice kind of sounds like until you've really done it for a while. You know, you go in the studio and most of us, we don't even like hearing our voice, even on a regular recording device. So we, you go in and you record it and you go, oh my God, this sounds terrible. What, you know, what, how can I fix this? Because I love singing so much. So it was like, uh, let me change style because I really loved R&B. R&B is my my real my real passion, and uh, um, you know we kind of slip into pop because pop is it is popular and sometimes you get that pop vibe anyway. You go in the studio and you do it, but R&B is really my thing. And after I did that blues song, I was like, well, I I can't do the blues because it just didn't sound right, you know. And and I don't know if I have the old soul for the blues either. So I'm like, well, but I love R&B. And I and when I started doing a couple of R&B songs, I'm like, yeah, this is where it's at. And then slowly we veered off into pop a little bit. It's kind of more mainstream. Um, in some things, I guess I have to go back on what I said. I guess in some things you have to go with the stream and, and the flow of things. <laughs> but uh, um, but yeah, R&B. R&B is is my favorite thing. And I started I started mostly with ballads, and then I I started doing some more upbeat songs. But ballads is I, I get a lot of compliments on ballads for sure. So if people looked at your playlist. Who who are you playing? Who are you listening to right now? Um, well, I do I do like the weekend, and uh, he was an acquired taste, really. You know, he's I had to listen to him for a bit, and then uh, when some some of the other artists came out around his time, I was like, well, no, the weekend is pretty damn good because you start comparing too. So I would say the weekend. I still rock Justin Timberlake, uh, of course, Bruno Mars, um, but select songs, not everything. You know, of course, not everybody can have awesome songs like every time. Same with Michael Jackson. I love Michael Jackson. If you hear some of my upbeat songs, it's total Michael influence. I mean, you can't deny it. And I don't deny it. And, and some people go, well, you know, you want to you want to be like Michael Jackson. No, nobody can be Michael Jackson. So if you if you're doing something like Michael or someone that influenced you you're just paying homage to that person you're not really trying to be that person um but i'd say so weekend bruno mars uh, i still love boys to men great harmonies um lionel richie i still rock some of those lionel richie songs from back in the day they're great hey, classic <laughs> you know barry white and i'm so sorry he's gone uh, you know all those all those guys from the like late nine, 90s 90s late 90s and early 2000s and I think Weekend is really what I listen to most as far as today. All right. Uh, yeah, he has some cool stuff out there. And so, like, if someone, if you wanted someone to take something away from your music, uh, what would that be? What, what kind of uh, vibe or what would, what would the message be? What do you want them to feel or what do you want to invoke when they listen to your music? Well, I always say if I... 
evoked a response, you know, an emotional response from my song, then I did my job. So if if I'm basically every theme that I sing about, I want to be sure that either if you don't feel it, that at least you understood what I was singing about. That's why it's so important for me to, you know, that you understand what I'm saying in these songs, which brings us to most people that sing nowadays. You can understand the thing they're saying. And I'm like, well, why are you on the record? No one can hear you or understand you. So I want to be understood. So you, you hear the story, basically, even if you if you don't really feel it, but you go, wow, this is really great. This is well done. And and of course, I mean, if you do feel it, then yeah, then just rock with it. And a lot of times, like we mentioned before, I want to really do something that's real, it, nothing fake, you know, and I don't have to cuss to, you know, come across with the points, although sometimes you do get that feeling to write cuss words when you write songs. But uh, I try to kind of stay away from them because um, I feel it's just not necessary. You can bring a point across without it. Absolutely. So what's the story of I Belong to You? Hmm. <laughs> well, I Belong to You is really the, it was like the idea of the endless romance, really. Um, I don't know if you if you have seen the, the video on YouTube. Uh, we put a spin on the video. I don't know if you, <laughs> if you saw it or not. But uh, um, it was really the endless romance. It was just, I wanted just almost like a classic type R&B vibe. And of course, it has some pop to it, but a classic R&B vibe with, with just great vocals, a nice melody, something easy to remember. And, uh, and I think we did that. I really do believe. But then we did that little spin on the uh, on the video and i think it came out okay well good we're going to keep them in suspense let them watch for themselves <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what's going on for sure uh, i definitely enjoyed the music while i was there so it says that you like riding your motorcycle so let me ask you california have yeah. you ridden your motorcycle on a 101 oh yes plenty of times <laughs> In, in, in fact, that's where I, I was close to the one one where I got into an accident one time. Um, and uh, we were riding, it was about 70 miles an hour. And of course, they decide to cross the solid lines into the carpool lane and sideswipe me. And I end up in the center divider and slide on the pavement for about 150 feet. So, yeah, I've ridden the, the freeway plenty. <laughs> yeah, the I've had a, I've had a close, I had a close view of the pavement as well. <laughs> Well, that part is not good, but the view I, when you, I read this, I was like, I can just see you on the 101. I mean, it's a breathtaking view, but it, it's a little bit treacherous. As, as yeah, well. it's nice. I mean, the streets are bad. I mean, we all know California streets have, you know, potholes and bumps and creases all over. So the streets are bad. But if you start riding like the Pacific Coast Highway, you know, the 101, it turns into the one. And yeah, I mean, it, it's nice to ride out there for sure. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, I've lived in all parts of the country and the streets are bad everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. oh, I see. This is what I have found uh, for sure. Man, this time has just flown by. So I, I want to get uh, what are your projects? Uh, where can people connect with you? Where can they listen to you? Uh, what do you have coming up? Um, well, I mean, really, I'm on every platform out there, no demand. Um, if they use Apple, if they use, you know, Google, if they use um, really anything, SoundCloud, I mean, I'm on everything. It doesn't matter. I, I'd be here, you know, talking about the list for a while, but really everything. They can, everywhere, they can, they can just type in L-U-Q-A or Luca the Artist and I will pop up. And Instagram, I mean, Facebook, you name it, everywhere. Spotify. I'm even Spotify. I'm on uh, what's the other big platform called? I can't remember. There's so many of them. Okay, so you guys heard it. You'll see it in in the credits as as this uh, podcast goes up. But it's L U Q A. We thank you for stopping by during Spire TV. So now you can add us to the list of the places that you are. <laughs> so oh hell yeah! <laughs> we're definitely well, no. <laughs> glad to have you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the time and helping me to to reach more listeners and fans out there. And I'm I'm glad you know I'm happy to to uh, uh, get in touch with fans if they want to get in touch with me. They can drop me lines even on on uh, YouTube. Or I will I will be responding back if they do for sure. 
All right. Well, I might have to drop you a line over there. Uh, just to let you right, know if cool. I stop by and am enjoying what you do. All right. Well, I'm going to close things up on my end, but it was awesome to have you here and, and take it easy and, and stay cool because 100 Thank degrees you so in much. Southern California is no bueno. I <laughs> yes, I know. Thank you so much, you too. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay, you guys, you rock with us for another uh, episode of Dreamspire TV. We had an awesome artist. Please go over and check out what he's doing. You're going to love that R&B vibe. We have all the links out there for you to connect. Until next time, have an awesome time.